What does it actually take to acquire an online business? Hi, I'm Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast, and today I'm speaking with Tim, who is a Bob program member, uh, also did some one-on-one coaching with me, and he was in the construction industry, bought an online business, and today we share his story. Tim shares so many valuable things about what his challenges were in buying a business, what his challenges were before he decided to make money online in terms of environment, the people that were supporting him or not supporting him in his life. We talk about the things that he went through during due diligence, what challenges he went through, how he overcame those. We talk about the process that we went on. We talk about the acquisition itself, what it was listed for, how much he bought it for, how he valued the business as well, and what the business is making per month, the multiple that he bought it for and all that sort of stuff. Also the niche, the industry. And then we go on to talk about mindset. Of course, you and I know a lot and love to talk about mindset. If you're listening to this, that's the biggest component of being successful and we talk in depth about that. There's so much value in this podcast episode. Life's nuggets of advice that Tim leaves in this podcast episode are absolutely gold. So make sure you stay to the end. Before we dive into the pod, of course, we're talking about buying a business. Don't go away and do this by yourself. Go away and get my DD framework. It's what I've used, what's Tim used, what a lot of our clients have used to go away and buy a business. It takes the guesswork out of buying a business. It's made people a lot of money and it's saved people a lot of money as well. So get that at buyingonlinebusinesses.com for that's free resources. Let's dive into the pod. What's up? This is Jared and I am stoked to have you here. Before we dive into the show, I want to remind you that for a limited time, you can get one-to-one voice note mentoring with me to help you buy and grow your online business. I'm opening up just a few slots of voice note coaching to give you one-to-one access to me via Coachbox. You'll tell me your goals and challenges and we'll work through them together. I'll ask questions, I'll tell you what I think, and we'll get you ticking boxes and achieving your online income goals. You can message me anytime and I'll respond within 48 hours. Right now, you can get 20% off by using the coupon code JARYD, that's J-A-R-Y-D, and I'll drop the link in the show notes so you can find out more. Until then, let's get on with the episode. Tim, hello. It's been a long time coming since us having this this discussion, this chat. Thanks for being open to jumping on and coming on the podcast and sharing your experience. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, hopefully, I could provide a little bit of value to the, the newcomers and uh you know, get some uh, information from from the pod. So I'm excited to uh, to share. I have no doubt. So first and foremost, why buy an online business? What, you know, how did you discover this? How did you come to the conclusion that you wanted to buy an online business, I guess? Yeah, so the million dollar question, Um, you know, it's not a, a far cry from a lot of other people's, um, you know, goals. Uh, freedom, you know, having the ability to just uh, pick up and go and and have an income, uh, whether you like to travel or or whatever you want to do. But uh, for me personally, it was more like I would guess uh, I would say a um I I'm a single guy, so I can travel whenever I want to. And I always yearn for that kind of like being able to live in a location and not be hindered by, you know, income, you know, and most of the time you're traveling to either third world countries or places that aren't, you know, as as prominent as the US. So you're not going to actually get a job in those countries and, and do well. So, you know, earning an income from, from dollars is is crucial. Uh, so that was really kind of my my focus um, I'd been a you know employee my whole life. I've always wanted to kind of own a business, but what held me back was having a brick and mortar store where you have to be in a fixed location. Um, you really can't travel with that, and 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 there's a lot of work that goes into that. So, um, I just started to to Google, you know, how to make money online, and uh, you know, the rest is is history. So, um, that's that's kind of that's kind of how it how it started. Yeah, cool, cool, awesome, and. When you first joined, just for people listen, like it's it's so interesting because everybody's journey is very, very different. And a lot of people think I'm going to achieve this sort of goal or buy a business within a certain time frame. And time frame is just like the worst metric to use. You know, because I talk about this in the buying online businesses course and all the mindset trainings and stuff like that. It really stuffs people up. And if people aren't going to use my course or go away and do it themselves, which I beg you not to, um, not for the sake of joining the, like you having to join the course, but just so you don't get taken advantage of, uh, please know that it's 
you're, you know, don't set yourself up to fail by setting a time frame, uh, because everybody's life is different, situations different. Like you said, Tim, you're a single guy. You typically got a bit more time than most people. Uh, I know that when you're acquiring this business, you weren't doing much work. Uh, and yeah, how long did it take you roughly? So since joining Bob, the course to like the acquisition, how long did it take you to get to the point where you closed on a deal? Yeah, so it took me a while um, to get through the course. It took me probably a year and exactly like three months from the time that I I purchased a business. I had made a few offers on other ones. They didn't work out. Um, but the course for me was, I mean, was extremely difficult as far as not from the information's laid out very well and, I, and I'm a systems learner, but it was just to stay focused because you get that initial excitement about it. And first you have to go through and you find, you know, go through all the people that are, you know, possibly scams. And I, I come from a, a family where every, everything's a scam. You don't trust anybody. So just to go online and to take an online course was like a leap of faith was like, wow, this is, you know, it does this work or not? Because yeah, I would talk to my friends and my family and they're like, what are you doing? Like you can't even share, you're really better off not sharing any of that information with people with that mindset because they'll just, they'll just, you know, create negativity around you. So I didn't really want to share a lot of that information with my friends and family because they just had no clue. And, and they would always be like, man, you, are you, aren't you scared about, uh, you know, scams and stuff? So anyway, from, from finding your content online and doing, you know, due diligence and making sure that you're a legit guy and, and everything, uh, you know, checked out, I purchased a course. And from that time on, it was just, um, I would start and then work would get in the way. And then I would, you know, I'd kind of go off in a couple of weeks here and there. So it, it took a while for me, uh, and to grasp the information. Um, so yeah, it was a long time. I know some people, will do it very fast. Like I said, uh, well, I hadn't been really computer savvy. You know, I use computer to, you know, shop or buy stuff online. And, you know, I really didn't even know how to copy and paste on a computer. So I was really, I was really green. I mean, I was really, really green. So, I mean, I think part of, part of that was, uh, you know, uh, inhibited me from, you know, achieving it faster than, you know, some other people do. I think you bring up a, such a valid point around, you know, sh I, I think it's good to share that you're doing things with your life where you're going to take these steps or you're going to go on this journey with people that are actually supportive of you. But you being conscious that, you know, some of the people in your life aren't supportive of you. And even still, I think it's, I shouldn't say not that they're not supportive of you. Sometimes they want the best for you, but also are, uh, their fear, they can put their fears onto you as well um, in terms of them trying to protect you. So what I've noticed in my life as well, and this is really good one to bring up because people, not just for people to get over the fear of joining the course or buying a business, but in general, I've noticed that in my life, even my parents, uh, they're the most supportive people for me uh, because they want me to they don't want any harm to happen to me right they love me they want no harm to happen to me so they they can be protective and that protectiveness they can put their fears onto me which can hold me back as well i'll give you an example literally it's my dad's birthday today time of recording called dad happy birthday to him and um he's like oh you're still buying this commercial property because i'm buying an investment at the moment in commercial property. I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay, I've been reading this stuff in the news. It's probably not the best time to buy a commercial property. <laughs> and I said to dad, I was like, look, man, like I, I, I hear that you've read that and I accept that. And thank you for letting me know. I'm still going to buy a property because there's markets within markets. They're probably talking about a general area. They're probably talking about one asset type. There's so many different nuances to it. Um, so thanks for letting me know. But I know that he's just mentioning that because he doesn't want me to lose my money. He doesn't want me to get taken advantage of. He doesn't want me to make a mistake. But the reality is that I need to go on this journey. And if I make a mistake, it's actually really good for me because I'm going to learn from it <laughs> versus like bubble wrapping me and me not making a mistake. So it's, I think the mindset around like sharing too much with the wrong people can hold you back because they can put their fears onto you. 
uh, and I did the same. You know, I had bought two businesses. I owned two businesses and I was working in construction like you have as well, Tim. And from these two businesses I owned, I would tell the, the, some of the guys at work would say, oh, how's, you know, how those businesses are going? I was, you know, I had like a two bad weeks that was not like, not bad, but just wasn't as good as what like all time highs were. And they uh, all just said, oh, I see you've been ripped off. You've got taken advantage of, you've, you know, you've stuffed up here. It's never going to work. And you're like, oh man, like, and you, and in at that time, my mindset wasn't as solid and strong as, as it is now. And you do, that can, that can cause you to make decisions differently. So I'm glad that you brought that up. It's really, really good to hear. 100% to touch base on that to kind of um uh you know my dad was was asking me oh, what about this ai i hear this ai is going to destroy all these websites like you know you may want to reconsider this thing and you know and and i was laughing about it because you know he really didn't didn't know much about it or really dive into the details of it so but yeah i, I you know there's a concern but like you said um you know you can't, as a parent, you can't be an enabler. You know, your child's got to grow up. They got to make their own decisions. And that's the job of the parent is to prepare you for those situations. If you don't take risk in life, you just, you never reach your full potential. You'll never know what you're capable of. So it's, it's kind of like you appreciate that they're looking out for you, but at the same time, you know, you're grown and, you know, you have to, you know, you have to take the risk and, 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 you know, it's just how, how it goes, but you got to appreciate the parents, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, my first business, I didn't tell a soul that I was buying the first business. My second business, I told my dad and dad was like, no, you can't buy this business. No way. He went through due diligence with me and everything. And he's like, no, you cannot buy this business. I bought it. And it was probably the best investment I had made up until that date. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting, you know, and, yeah, it's just good for people, us to talk about this and air this so people are conscious of like how some people can be super supportive and some people maybe not. Like where I live now, everybody's an entrepreneur and everybody is rooting, like genuinely rooting for you to be successful versus some other parts of the world or where you may live. You being coming successful can make other people feel more inferior about themselves. So they, you know, in a, you know, in a sense, they, they, I know in Australia this happens. It's called tall, tall poppy syndrome. They'll try and protect you or um, they don't actually, a lot of people, some people don't want to see you succeed because it will make them not feel as happy about how they are or where they're at in their life. So something to consider when you're going down the path of, it's a major hurdle to achieve fire, right? Financial independence, retire early and make money online. It's, I still say today, that and I was on another podcast interview earlier. That the one of the greatest things I've ever achieved up until now is is replacing my income. It was probably the hardest task. So, yeah, good on you, good on you for buying a business, Tim. What's what other challenges did you face around buying and the acquisition? Maybe through due diligence or any of that. What's up until you bought your business? What other challenges did you face that? would be interesting for people to be aware of too. Oh, uh, challenges like life-wise or, or just uh, when, when it pertains to online business. Yeah. You know, the biggest challenge, um, uh, fear, fear, fear is a powerful, powerful thing. And um, when you're, when you grow up and, and those types of, th you know, that is instilled in you to, to be fearful of things um, at a young age, uh, don't take risks. Uh, it kind of is a catalyst to everything in your life. So you tend to go towards things that are more um, secure, uh, that, that, you know, you, you're comfortable with staying comfortable. Um, it's, it's just a very horrible way to grow up, I think. And, and it's a very difficult thing to get away from because once it's ingrained in you, 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 it's like this self-perpetuating, like, thought process in your mind where you want to do something but then it's just it's just these the you know the voice in your head like the the good and bad angel on the shoulder so to speak you know but so so that was a big challenge personally in my life uh 
uh, with work situation. But when it comes down to the business, online businesses, I think the biggest struggle for me was uh, the due diligence, the the ability to look at uh, businesses and just compare them. You know, it sounds kind of simple, but the only way to really get good at that, that is to do, I mean, multiple. And some people can pick up on it with 10, 5, you know, some people 40, 50, you know, and the more you do, obviously, the better you get at it. So, um, but but it's torturous. I mean, even though you have the the framework is so it's so structured and it's it's a step by step thing. Just going through it and um, just you know you start on something and then you're like, oh, this sucks, and you got to start all the way over. But uh, the one thing to think about is just uh, it, to focus on it is people forget about the journey. You know that it's. The end game, the destination, it really, I mean, it sounds cliche because a lot of people say it all the time, and but it's just true. Like if you can embrace the suck, you know, that's, that's where the growth comes from, you know, from the simplest, from the simplest task, you know, just taking that step to, you know, in the first module, you know, we're going through the mindset course. I mean, just the, the smallest little things you know, will build on it on, on themselves. So it's just, um, it, it's a very, if people th think it's easy, this is not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I don't care. You know, there's guys in the group that are, are very skilled and technical and stuff. And, you know, they'll buy sites and, you know, next thing you know, you know, uh, Google will, will smash it, you know, you know, they humble you. So, um, it's not a, it's not an easy thing to do, but, uh, I think, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to the, to the small steps, you know, and, and, and focus more on the journey than, you know, than, than your destination. I think people kind of get in that. I know when I started, I was like, okay, the more money I have to spend on a business, the more monthly net revenue I'm going to have. So freedom, right? Like, wow, snap your fingers, wave the magic wand and bam. Okay. So I just, uh, maybe it's a six figure business. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. You know? And it's just, it, it's, it doesn't work that way. You know, anything that is anything that's uh, difficult to do, easy to do is not respected. So, you know, this is a difficult thing to do uh, and you need the proper people around you and you need the community around you. And, um, you know, that's, uh, it's fun. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta be up for it. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, I'm so glad that you shared that. It's like, it's not easy. It's a challenge. It's a simple process, right? Do the course, learn how to do due diligence, do it multiple times and then find the right one eventually and you buy it. Simple process, but that in reality, the actionable steps is there's a lot, there's a lot to it. And I'll imagine this though, Tim, Imagine if you had joined and you found a business and you bought the first business you looked at. Imagine how much you, how much worry, fear you would have now owning that business versus you doing DD on maybe 10 to 20 or 30, sorry, maybe 30 or 40 businesses. Imagine like, how much harder it would be for you to be the business operator if you bought the first one versus you looking at so many other businesses. People don't see or understand that that process that you go through is setting you up for success to know the market, understand how these businesses work and know what to do next and have the confidence to pull the trigger. Like it's that whole education that people, this is, that's what people actually what they want is the business, but what they actually need is that process that gets them there. So yeah, it's a, imagine that. Imagine if you had bought the first business you, you looked at. <laughs> there's no, there's no way. I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. And especially now how the landscape has just changed completely, you know, uh, with all the Google uh, updates, I'm so in a way I'm grateful that it took me that long to, pur to pur purchase a business because I got to see the ugly side, like everything was, you know, rainbows and butterflies for so long. And you look at everything online and everyone's making all this money and they're just posting all this content and getting traffic to their site and revenues coming in. And then 
So I'm like, man, this it just seems too good to be true. This can't happen this way. So when the updates came and and a lot of sites were getting, you know, we're getting hammered, it kind of humbles you and you's like, it gets you back to reality. It's like, okay, you can lose this is a this is a risk. You can lose all of your money. Like there's people sites that have been de-indexed, you know, like Google's just gone in and just bam, you know, you're gone. And it's interesting because a lot of people, you know, come from real estate uh, to this space also. When you buy property, like obviously you have to run the numbers, make sure it's cash flowing or whatever you're you're doing, flipping or whatnot. But at the end of the day, if you don't have cash flow, you still have the property. <laughs> you know, you have a tangible thing that that will if the market's down, you could hold it and and eventually it'll come back. You know, history history's shown that. But if if you if your site goes to zero, you know, that's a that's a done deal, you know. So it's really uh you really gotta understand the the risks also, you know. So there's high there, you know, there's there's great returns in, in this industry, but there's also a, a a big risk, you know. So you gotta you gotta take that into consideration. So I'm grateful that I got to experience that didn't wait or didn't get a business you know, uh, wait so long to get a business. I wouldn't have seen that in the, in the market, you know, in the marketplace. So I'm kind of, kind of glad it took that long. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you learned through due diligence that were pretty valuable? Maybe two or three things that you learned through due diligence that you'd love to share with people that you think it's important for them to know when, when they're moving into doing DD. So, you know, yeah, obviously a clean P and L. You know, um, basically, you know, making sure that all the numbers are are you know correlated or are are uh, you know you can you can um, you can make sure that they are valid. Um, you know, making sure that buybacks. You know, you're 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 checking out the buybacks and how to negotiate for those because sellers like to stick those in there. Um, you know, and I think the relationship with the seller is really, really a, a crucial one, um, especially someone like me who's never, you know, operated a, a, a business, you know, have a seller that has skin in the game that has maybe like a passion project that they really want to see you exceed, uh, you know, succeed uh, with with the site is crucial too. Um, I had a great experience with my my seller. And, uh, you know, he was able to, you know, kind of guide me through a lines, which was helpful. Um, so I think those those are probably the top top things to to look for, um, you know, as far as when you're doing DD. Um, I'm sure there's multiple, but those kind of are the top three that, that stick out for me. Um, also, which I didn't also so I didn't I had my sticking to my goals and guidelines, they obviously changed over the course of time, you know, because you have to, you know, change, change for, for the market. Um, so I think, uh, you know, being flexible is, is a good thing also. And, um, 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 I think those are probably the top, the top things that kind of stick out in my mind. Yeah. I love that you mentioned the flexibility because, I've had people come in and they want to buy this sort of business for this sort of price that's, you know, operating this way and they can't find it and it doesn't exist. <laughs> and so they think, oh, this, this, this is a crap space. I'm not going to, I'm not going to invest, but they've missed out on so much other opportunity with other investments. And they, they went away and got frustrated with the industry and like, you don't understand, like you've, you've got to meet the market as well. Uh, it's the same in every investment. If you are wanting to buy Bitcoin for, you know, $150 today in 2024 when we're recording, and that's your expectation, that's your investment criteria. Well, of course, you're going to be pissed off and stressed out and, and not buy or acquire it, but you're going to miss out on wherever it is at. Like now, maybe it's around 70. You're going to miss out on that bit that it goes from 70 to 200 or 300 or 70 to 100 or whatever it is, you're going to miss out on the opportunity because you're not meeting the market. 
Um, and I'm not the biggest, I'm not shout, shouting to the rooftops that I'm a huge advocate of Bitcoin, but it's just an example. Um, not to say that Bitcoin's bad. I have a little bit of it in my portfolio. So with, with the acquisition, oh, first I want to ask, all right, so how did your investment criteria change? And then let's talk about let's talk about numbers, and then I got a couple of other questions for you around, you know, advice and stuff. Yeah, so I think the most difficult part for for newcomers are is what what niche do you what kind of site with you know obviously you know ecom. There's so many different SaaS. There's so many. Different, yeah. Um. So that's where you start, and for me, and you know, obviously you preach content sites uh, and, and that was one of, did, you know, one I of the preach content sites. There's, there's new information. Because it was, yeah. Yeah. Back then now there's new information. Well, the environment so changes, it, right? It's like one time you course, might be pitching a, Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, from when, from speaking from when I started, so a year, a, a little a year and a half ago, that was kind of like the introduction into the online business world and content sites made sense. I mean, it just, it just fit the the bill, you know? So from that point, then you decide the niche and that is a struggle because people are, and I struggle with that because I'm like, I want to find something that I'm interested in because about, because you always you always kind of look at people who are very successful and it only seems like they found their passion and that's what they do. You know, like they find that and then they just put everything into that. And in a way that's true, but also um, in a way you have to kind of, re um, I don't know, reframe your passion or kind of from a different. So what I did was more looked at uh, the business from so how can I grow the get enjoyment from grow, taking something from a from a, a baby steps and growing it? You know what was the growth potential? You know rather than looking at it, well, do I really want to write, write about puppies and 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 something blogging about that kind of stuff? You know, it was more or less more focused in on okay, how do I find a business that I can grow um, that that's has more potential? It was more of the the focus on the potential, the growth for me, rather than the actual actual niche, is if that makes sense. So glad you mentioned that too, because the biggest thing that holds people back is the perception or the conditioning that you need to buy something that you're passionate about. And I've told this story before where I used to hate my job, but to get me through the job until I was able to retire from it, I found a path a part of the job that I was passionate about, which made me, which made going through the job fun and good, right? Until I was able to quit. So you don't, this is the thing is like, there are so many successful people that sell particular products. They have zero care for, right? In their own personal life. It doesn't light them up, but what lights them up is maybe marketing or what lights them up is copywriting or what lights them up is operations or being operation manager or being a CEO, right? I bought a business before suits. I don't care for suits, right? I don't care. Like it's, it's not my, you know, I'll, I'll wear suits when I wear suits and I enjoy wearing them, but I don't need to wear suits all the time. It's not something that I love and I'm super passionate about, but the business crushed it. That's what got me out of my job. So that's an important story to share. So <clears throat> awesome. Congrats uh, on the acquisition. You found something not particularly a, a niche that you're like, yes, this is going to be my whole life and my whole personality now. Uh, but you like the business model, right? So, why why did you choose this business? How much did you acquire it for, and what was it making per month? Yeah, so um, I my original for was around a hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, with about 30k in, you know, capital to improve the business. Um, this was uh, a site. It, it's in the in in the entertainment slash uh, educational niche, and the site was a hundred and 
I think it was asking around $142,000. Uh, it was relatively new, which was very, very kind of scary for me. Um, the site was about a year and a half old, but the income was basically solid for eight months. It wasn't a solid 12 month income. So he was pricing it three ways. Obviously, three months, <laughs> three months, six months, and a and year multiple. So it was kind of a weird situation because um what what I liked though was that on the PL he had put everything, all the initial costs in there. So I got to see the growth from from day one. And he didn't hide any of those costs. And the site was growing. Um, was growing was growing um during that time the whole period even through the most recent helpful content update so it gave me a little more confidence um but ideally i'd wanted my guidelines was like at least a year of of uh of revenue so uh the revenue based on six month it was generating somewhere around thirty three hundred dollars a month in in that revenue um so basically, um, I kind of split that and I wound up purchasing the site for, I think it was about $23,000 I wound up purchasing the site for. Uh, my, my goal was to basically um, get the site with the SEO guys and just create a content plan and a growth strategy uh even though the the previous owner had a great content plan um and he had done a lot of keyword research so a lot of that came with the business and um so so yeah that was kind of like how things played out but in hindsight i was like uh, it was unsettling because i wish i had i wish i had a little more info on you know a little more uh track record on the Business. I kind of rolled the dice with that one a little bit. I took a little, little more risk than I wanted, but you know, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, we've got to remember as well, the time of acquiring this one, a Google update had happened and this site was a lot of sites had been severely affected by it. And this site had not been affected by that update. So it was pretty attractive. Right. Um, and uh, did, did you did you say that you say how much was it making on average per month? It was in the round thirty three hundred net revenue. Yeah, yeah. And so, what multiple did you end up buying it for? So I was at thirty four multiple. Yeah, cool. And I think we, because this business we found uh, off market as we are selling businesses um, to you know you guys in the group. It's part of what we do. Uh, and we found an off market deal and this one was a pretty good deal because there was not many of those businesses that had not been affected by the Google updates. And there was a bit of competition in this one. I know that it was a bunch of other people that were, had bid on this one and did not get it. Uh, and you, you did, I guess, what do you feel helped you get this business across the line with, a bunch of other competition that is obviously pretty, you know, pretty savvy buyers being trained by, you know, I'm um, being biased, but being trained by us. Absolutely. And they were much, and, and, you know, and they were more savvy than I, I was. I think what it was, um, so a lot of people had a little hesitation because it was such a young, young business. So I think, um, that was part of part of it. So uh, what the seller did was another thing that gave me confidence was it was an in-house in-house business. So I was a little felt a little more confident because it was an off market deal. It wasn't with, you know, Empire Flippers with the community. So and a lot of people had looked at it. And I respect everyone in the group and I think everyone's great and, you know, they, they do great due diligence. So I was like, well, all these people are really interested in it. And then the seller had put kind of a timeline on it, which was kind of like, oh shit, you know, put up or shut up because it was smart on his part, you know, from being a seller. Okay. I want everyone who's serious about this. So basically it kind of pushed me 
And I had made offers on a couple other businesses that didn't go through. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to just throw an offer out there, a simple, clean offer, because I was a cash buyer. And um, that's kind of what the seller was looking for. I think he didn't really want to do a payout. So it was... To be honest, I think it was just I think it was just luck. It was just the timing, you know, that that what he was looking for was what I was providing, you know, a cash offer. You know, I I think I put in the 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 contract was like, you know, I need a month of, you know, um, you know, kind of like help and 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 you know, um email, email support, the transition. And he was more than happy to do that. He actually gave me even more. He recorded some video, you know, showing me how to run the site, which was helpful because I got to go back and review the video on how to use, you know, Webflow as a platform and, you know, how to, you know, uh, upload to CMS and stuff like that. So it was very, I just think it was that, I don't really believe, I don't know. I can't say I believe in luck, but it was a bit, of, it was a, it was timing. I think it was just timing, you know? And um, so, so that, that's real magic, too, you know? Yeah. I, I, I do like this really good explanation of luck that I learned from a book. Roger Hamilton is the author. Um, luck standing for location, understanding, connection, and knowledge. And being in the right place, the right time, location, understanding the deal, having the connections, and also having the knowledge to execute and make an offer that's suitable to the seller definitely got lucky, right? Um, so I think it's a, a huge, a huge component of like all the components of the year over a year of you doing the work, looking at the market, the businesses, knowing what's you know a good deal and a bad deal. You went through and saw that okay, there was a bunch that were selling that you know I've missed out on that were good. I obviously need to meet the market and give the people what they're after. And we did just that. I mean, and a 34 multiple is a pretty damn good multiple in that environment for a business that had not been affected by the update. As we do, we try and list these businesses at the most fairest price um, because, you know, we're not in this for just like, we like money. We like making money. We're a business, of course. I'm not going to hide the fact that that's money's important, uh, but we just like to do the right thing um, by the market and not overinflate them. Now, I want to ask around advice. You know, you and I have been working together and doing coaching for a bit to get this business. Uh, what's, how important was that in the role of you? And I'm, I'm not, uh, you can say it didn't help at all if you like as well. Like you say whatever you like, be, be completely open, honest, but what, what role did that play in you acquiring the business and how did that either help you or not help you? You know, for me, because coming, coming from my background growing up, I really didn't have a mentor in my life, like someone that would actually guide me in a certain direction. Um, so I think uh, having you out to you because in the beginning I, I did, I was doing everything on my own and then I kind of was hitting some roadblocks. So, Oh, that one tried to, and, and did the one-on-one -on -one coaching because I really wanted, I admired you from your story. We kind of had similar, similar stories being in the production industry. Um, and I just really thought you were a guy. And um, I was like, man, I've never had a mentor, but if I have one, I, you know, I want, I, I want to reach out to Jared and see if he can kind of get me on that path and essentially still hold me to, 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 you know, take an action on stuff also. So I reached out because I really wanted, I really knew that having a mentor, not only the Facebook group is really great, but I needed a little extra, a little extra help. So um, just having, having, you know, your guidance was crucial. And when you're dropping six figures on a business that you've never even heard of, it's great to have people in your corner that, that, that know it, you know, that, that can answer the questions you have. And every time I had a question, you know, you answered it. And after I got off the calls with you, I always felt like, okay, great. I'm, I'm going in the right direction. It was kind of like just a reassurance in a way, you know, I mean, some people have that 
built confidence that, you know, they've been doing this for a while, but like I said, I didn't have any of this, you know, like I'm, I've been an employee my whole life, you know, I mean, just collecting a paycheck. So this was, uh, so having you, you know, as support was, was absolutely crucial. And I recommend if someone's in my situation, um, to, to absolutely, you know, reach out and, and connect with you and, and, and just, uh, you know, have you in your corner because it's, it's priceless. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I've really enjoyed working with you and, you know, we are very similar, very similar people, very similar, um, backgrounds, um, similar story. And yeah, it's been a, a very much a pleasure on my end to connect with you and work with you. Um, so thank you so much. And I'm glad that, yeah, we, we finally got an acquisition for you. Do you have any parting words for people that, you know, are looking to, you know, buy business? Be patient and and get out of your I see a lot of people just getting wrapped up in their feelings. You've got to separate the emotional aspect to business. You you can't get emotion. That is the biggest, the biggest takeaway. You cannot get emotional and you can't put a time frame on this. I did it myself in the beginning. I really was like, okay, six months. I have the cat, Jared, I got the cash. Like I got the cash. I could just buy a business and bam, I'm making four or five grand net revenue a month. Oh, it's just posting some articles, you know, and I'll be in Indonesia, in Bali, you know, seeing you next. It just, it doesn't work that way. You know? Be patient, uh, be patient, go through the modules, go back if you need to really get obsessed with the process get obsessed with the process you will succeed but in itself that's difficult um it, it you just the focus you know go through the mindset no matter how ridiculous it seems you got to set your mind right for this cuz this is a this is this is not an easy task it's a journey and it's just something you got to stick to and be consistent with. It's like, you're never going to get results if you don't stay consistent. And I fell off a bunch of times and, um, you know, that's the key. If you can just get through the material and stay consistent, whatever you have to do, write down a daily task, what you're going to do, you know, that's the key takeaway to, and you'll succeed. I mean, it's just, it's the grind. You have to, you got to put the work in um, and just be patient. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. I mean, it's I'm simple, but it's actually difficult. So for every, everyone out there, good luck. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's, it's, it's funny. Hey, like people have heard me say this so many times, like, you know, you just got to do the work and be like, you like just what you've said, couldn't have said it any better. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. I get that. I get that. But what's the secret? what's the secret? Like, how do I actually buy a business? How do I actually replace my income? How do I actually do this? And they're looking for something else that they haven't heard before. The reality is, is like, you know what to do. Just do the work. <laughs> you know, that, you know, the, the secret the, to take it one step further, the secret is to, is to figure out a way how you can stay focused, whatever that, if that's writing things down and checking them off as tasks, then that's what you have to do. Because I have a, I have a focus problem. I've grown up with a focus problem. Like I get distracted with a lot of different things. And in order to, in order to succeed at staying focused, you have to have a tangible, uh, a, a short-term goal. Like if you're going to come home after work, Put it on your calendar. You're going to spend two hours going through the modules and you're not going to stop. Like you're going to, no distractions, just sit there and then get your little calendar and check it off. You know, you did that. And then there's, there's your win for the day. Then the next day, the same thing as you, as you continually do that, you'll, you'll start to kind of compound. It'll be like, it's like compounding interest, right? You just continue to focus on that and and that for me was the way that I was able to because people throw these words out. Well, how, how do you stay, you know, shit gets in the way, you know, life happens. You have to get back to 
what your vision and what your what your main goal is. So if you can if you can take all the the noise outside, whether you got family, you know, kids crying, whatever, and and get that time frame just for even if it's an hour, 45 minutes, just devote that 45 minutes, hour, whatever it is that you can give and just be focused in that in that time you will, you will succeed. You'll do it. So that that's kind of a one step forward, uh, one, one step, uh, to, to that, if that helps anybody. That helps hugely. You know, it's fun. It's funny that people are like, yeah, if I buy a business, it's going to change my life. It's typically not the business that's going to change your life. It's this process that you go through because like you said, Tim, like you become, you don't need, you don't want to become a business owner right? You want to become the person that you need to be to build the character, to become a business owner. And this is the, that, that this process the, is the initiation and the compounding that you get from that is what's going to set you up for success in the future of the compounding of like where you're at right now today, Tim, like the process you went through can be and may actually be more valuable than the business you actually bought and is going to be the stepping stone to the next to the next route. So I'm really excited to see where you go in the next year or two. And yeah, congrats on what you've achieved so far. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because there was a big step just to take the risk. So, you know, you know, that was the big step just to take the risk to get out of the mindset of, of, you know, you know, worry about failure and all that other crap, just to take the risk was, was a big jump for me. So I'm starting at literally the, the, the door with just taking the risk. And now, I mean, the start just, it's just, um, now the, the really difficult part comes, you know, so it's almost going to be easier to buy. Yeah. The next part is going to be even harder than finding the business. So, you know, but you're aware of that. You could and you know just roll with the punches. Yeah, and look at the person you'll become from starting this new journey. You know, uh, it's it's exciting. So yeah, again, Tim, thank you so much for coming on, and sharing. Really do appreciate your time. No, thanks, Jared, for having me. And uh, once again, I appreciate what you do and the value you provide to the group. Um, it's it's a great service that you have. So so thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, YouTube watcher, if you thought that video was good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out. It's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.